Depression is the leading cause of global disability, with an estimated 322 million cases worldwide. Unfortunately, though, even the most effective treatments have response rates of only about 40 to 60 percent. This means that for up to 120 million people, current depression treatments aren't working. Furthermore, for this population in which treatments are not effective, the genetic and biological factors that contribute to this lack of response, also described as treatment resistance, are still largely unknown. Something that has been theorized to contribute to some forms of treatment resistance is low levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin. Millions of people are taking antidepressants to try to alleviate their depression symptoms, but many individuals do not have access to or choose not to utilize medication approaches. One alternative low-cost approach that shows promise in alleviating some symptoms is cardiovascular exercise. My project is concerned with understanding how low levels of serotonin impact exercise interventions intended to reduce depression symptoms. Specifically, my overarching research question is, does low serotonin prevent the antidepressant-like effects of exercise? To examine this question, I utilized a mouse model of serotonin deficiency. Exercise is known to reduce depression symptoms in some individuals, but whether genetic factors like serotonin deficiency dictate an individual's sensitivity to these benefits remains unknown. One mechanism that is thought to contribute to the antidepressant effects of exercise is increasing hippocampal neurogenesis. Hippocampal neurogenesis is the formation of new neurons in the hippocampus, a structure within the medial temporal lobe of the brain. This study compared wild-type mice with mice with 60 to 80 percent less brain serotonin, who either completed four weeks of wheel running exercise or served as non-exercise controls. At the end of the study period, these groups were compared on several anxiety and depression-like behavioral measures. I found that on half of these measures, the low serotonin mice did benefit from exercise, but not as much as the other mice did. One of these measures on which I saw significant effects has been previously been reported to require hippocampal neurogenesis. For the next phase of this research, I will complete cellular quantification of neurogenesis in these mice to further understand its impact on the behavioral results I saw. Overall, the findings of this study suggest that exercise still appears to lead to some antidepressant and anxiety reduction benefits in serotonin deficient animals. In the future, I'm interested in learning more about why these mice don't respond as fully to exercise and how we can boost their response, as this has significant implications for depression treatment response. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allison. Questions for Allison? Yes, right here. Does uh, the, these low serotonin mice, do they respond to antidepressants like SSRIs and those kind of things as well? No, but the, the, there's an expert back there who can tell you even more about that, but the <laughs> short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right here. How do you um, find mice with, do you like look for mice with lower levels of serotonin or do you treat them with something to get rid of the serotonin? Uh, these are genetically engineered mice in the lab, so they're bred to have this reduced serotonin. Yes, Akendra. Uh, yes, what were the parameters you were comparing? Uh, there are several behavioral measures. I can tell you the names of them. I don't know if it would be meaningful, but I'd be happy to. Uh, um, it was the novelty suppressed feeding test, the open uh, field test, the elevated plus maze, um, and the uh, four swim test. All right, fantastic, thank you.